Asana is making updates to their platform all the time. And sometimes these updates just kind of sneak in and you don't even really notice them. They're really subtle. So today I'm gonna highlight three changes to Asana that you may not have realized over the last few weeks to help you improve your workflow and take advantage of these awesome new resources. Thanks for tuning into Asana Solutions, the best place on YouTube for everything related to Asana, process improvement, and workflow management. My name is Marquis. I'm your host. I'm the founder of Ditto, where we help teams and owners of companies eliminate the stress of not knowing where or how the work is happening. So for today's video, again, I'm gonna overview three new updates to Asana that you may not have noticed. The first one is actually right in front of us. So I'm gonna dive into that really quickly. I'm gonna be showing you uh, some updates to rules and automations. And then the last one, I'm actually gonna keep a little bit of a secret until you see it. Because unless you're using these views in Asana, you probably wouldn't have noticed this really subtle update. So the first one that I'm going to show you, it's actually right on the screen. You'll notice in the upper left, you probably can't see it because I'm not recording that section of the screen, but I'm actually using the brand new Asana app, the desktop app on um, OS currently. And so there is a new desktop app. So if you're used to, you know, um, working in the browser, it looks the exact same. It's really clean. It's really fast. Um, yeah, you hardly even notice you're not inside the browser. And what is kind of different here is you can now go back and forth between, you know, different screens that you're at within Asana. There's a history here that shows you what you were just working on. Um, the only thing I don't love about this app is you would on the browser have the ability if you were to enter in another space or organization to open it up right from here. If I do switch to another uh, workspace organization, it moves me there and I can't actually have both of them open at the same time. What would be nice is if we have tabs within Asana so we could have all of our most commonly used workspaces and organizations um, in that one spot. Apart from that though, the app is seamless. I'd recommend getting it. It's really cool because then you don't have to be searching on your Chrome browser anymore for where your Asana tabs are. Are. So that's probably the biggest update um, that I would say. And depending on the links that you click within Asana, um, they actually open up as a window in Asana. Um, so some cases it will actually open up in a tab in Chrome, and then in others will actually open up another window within the Asana space. And so that's pretty cool. I know they're still working on some things, but uh, check it out, download it today. Um, I think it's really cool. The second one that I'm going to show you is some changes to rules. So if you are a fan of rules and you're using them and you're creating custom rules or you're just you know pulling from the stack here, they're always updating the different integrations and the different rules and automations that you can apply within Asana. But now you have the ability to apply inverse rules. So instead of you know completing something, we can now uncomplete something or we instead of assigning something to someone, we can remove someone as an assignee. So I'm just going to show you a quick example. So in this case, if we were to add a task to a section or if a task moves to a certain section as an action, we can now bring in an assignee and instead of assigning that task, we can unassign that task. Instead of having, you know, the due date set, we can clear the due date. Same thing with collaborators, instead of adding them, we can remove them. So there's so many things that we can do now and I'm sure you're thinking of different use cases for uh, these new inverse rules. But again, just one of those changes that was really subtle but it's gonna help improve a lot of automations and a lot of repetitive work within Asana. And the last and my most favorite uh, update so far is going to be the one I'm showing you now, which is creating public links to both your timeline and calendar view. So this, obviously, I'm in the list view here. I just have some random tasks that I pulled in. We're, we're on a mission to Mars this year. Uh, so I have some assignees here, some due dates, right? We know we can switch to the board. We can switch to calendar dashboard. But if I go into timeline, we now can turn on links. And these links are live. We can preview the links, we can copy this link, and what is amazing about these links is I'm gonna switch over here to an incognito window, 
and we can add those links right in there. And so we can share these with people that aren't logged into Asana. We can share these with clients if we're providing an update to them. And so it's really flexible, really customizable. So now we can keep external stakeholders who aren't using the tool on track with our projects. The same is true for calendar, right? We can activate those links right in here. And so how you would do that is you're gonna go to your admin console, you're gonna go over to security. By default, it's already enabled, but we can share and enable the link sharing here, or we can disable link sharing as an administrator. So those are three quick updates uh, that Asana has released over the last several weeks. Check them out. Would love to know, are you seeing these in your portal yet? And how are you using them? Again, if this video was helpful or you think it would you know, benefit someone, please share it with a friend, family member, colleague, like, subscribe, share this video. So appreciate you being here and spending your a few minutes on YouTube with me. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon.